It's the biggest game of the season with the playoffs on the line. Your team is behind by two with time running out. Your rivals shoot and miss. You get the rebound and call timeout with four seconds left. Time for one last play. Imagine you're in the coach's seat. You can go for a three-point shot to win or a two-point shot to go into overtime. What should you do? Coaches need to make high-stakes decisions while facing lots of uncertainty. When things don't turn out right, there's a lot of second-guessing. Making the right call at the right time is one reason some coaches get paid so much. In this video, we'll examine a tool that can help identify the best action when facing uncertainty. It's called a decision tree. You know you're less likely to hit the three-pointer than the two-pointer. You want to maximize the odds of winning. So, how can you know you're making the right choice? A decision tree can help you be sure. When you build a decision tree, you start by listing the decisions and uncertainties in the order they will occur. Draw a square to represent the decision, which you'll label what shot. Lines coming from the square are your alternatives, which you'll label either a three-pointer or a two-pointer. In either case, you don't know whether you'll make the shot. Draw a circle to represent the uncertainty, and lines coming from the circle represent possible outcomes. Since you can only make or miss the shot, you can label the outcomes on the tree as yes and no. Making a two-point shot results in another uncertainty. Will you win in overtime? So you add that to the two-point shot branch of our tree, like this. Next, you'll need to represent the possible outcomes at the end point of the various branches, in this case, win or lose. Following that, you'll add probabilities to the tree, starting with the two-point shot. Let's say a good estimate for a two-point jumper, based on your year's average, is 55%. You would put that probability in the yes branch, and that makes the no branch 45%, since they total 100%. Now how about winning in overtime? This might be 50-50, assuming you've been evenly matched this far in the game. For the three-point shot, let's assume you've averaged 40% for the season. That makes the chance of no for the three-point shot 60%. That's everything we need to decide what to do. Now, following the two-point shot path, you're 55% likely to make the shot and 50% likely to win in overtime. To find the probability that will make the two-point shot and win in overtime, we multiply the two, giving us a 27.5% chance. Since we're equally likely to lose in overtime as win, the chance of losing in overtime is also 27.5%. This is called a joint probability. Now, let's fill in the rest of the tree. There's a 45% chance you'll miss the two-pointer. For the three-point shot, you can also extend the outcomes, 40% to make it and 60% to miss it. Now, total up the values for each alternative. The two-point shot is 27.5% likely to win and 72.5% likely to lose. For the three-point shot, the win-lose probabilities are 40% and 60%. So even though you're more likely to lose either way, you're better off taking the three-point shot, as this gives you a much better chance of winning. If you do the math, 40% is 45% better than 27.5%. That's a significant difference. That's why consistently making the better decision is what separates the good from the great. This kind of sound reasoning can give you confidence when facing uncertainty and protect you from decision traps like hindsight bias. Hindsight bias is our natural tendency to look at the outcome of a decision and evaluate the decision based on the outcome. You can make the right choice and lose. Facing a similar situation, you should still make the same decision. You can make the wrong choice and win. This means you got lucky. You shouldn't have done it and you shouldn't do it again. A good decision doesn't turn bad because the outcome's bad. A bad decision doesn't turn good because it had a good outcome. Avoid the decision trap of looking backwards through hindsight bias. Focus instead on getting to better decisions beforehand. Tools like decision trees and the decision chain help you identify the difference between a good decision and a bad decision in advance. Now that you understand the basics of building a decision tree, you can apply it on your own to identify your best alternatives. This tree was simple but this approach can be applied to any decision to identify the best alternative, given what you want and what you know.